Hi, my name is David and I'm going to tell you about the evolutionary theory of aging. So why do we age? When you first think about it, aging seems to be something like a Darwinian paradox. As we get older, we become weaker, we become slower, we become more and more susceptible to disease, we get worse eyesight, worse hearing, worse memory, uh, our bones don't heal as easily, etc, etc, etc. And all of this adds up to becoming more and more likely to die as you get older. So of course, none of these seem to be good things, so why did natural selection let it happen? Why did it not make us all immortal? It could have. There are, in fact, animals or organisms that are immortal, although they can still be killed. What we mean is that they don't become any more likely to die as they get older. Um, so how come the rest of us are not immortal? How come the rest of us age? As it turns out, in the theory that is accepted by most scientists, aging is not good for anything. It's not an adaptation at all. Um, and the theory for why natural selection let it happen anyway, was mostly worked out by two guys, Peter Medawar and George C. Williams, working separately, although there had also been foreshadowing before this and details were added later. And this theory, or their two theories, are what I'm going to tell you about. So the key idea lying behind both Medawar and Williams' ideas about aging is called the declining force of natural selection with age. And what that means is that the ability of natural selection to respond, either favorably or unfavorably, to a mutation depends on the time during your life at which that effect happens. So, for example, if there was a gene that makes your heart explode, then that's of course very bad for you, but as far as natural selection cares, um, how bad it is depends on when it makes your heart explode. So, for example, if it made your heart explode right as soon as you were born, natural selection would completely and utterly immediately remove it because you have not yet had kids. You can't have kids. Your heart exploded first, and so you will not pass that gene on. But if instead you suppose that the gene made your heart explode when you were 50, you've probably already had a couple kids, and they will have that gene too, and so eventually their hearts will explode. And they maybe have also had kids by then, so your grandkids will also so the gene will get passed on um more easily and if it's removed by the natural selection then that will happen more slowly so that example was of course made up but there are real examples of genes that also illustrate this principle one that partly inspired metawar was an analysis by jbs haldane the biologist who wanted to understand why huntington's disease is as common as it is Huntington's disease is caused by a single dominant gene, and it has very serious effects. It causes lack of coordination, including involuntary writhing movements. It causes mental changes and personality changes, and complications from it can be fatal. This is the disease that killed focusing a Woody Guthrie. Um, so Haldane's answer for why it was so common was that the effects of it, the symptoms, don't usually appear until roughly your late 30s or your early 40s. So like with the example from earlier, you can quite easily have already had kids before this time. And Haldane also pointed out that back in the, before civilization started, you know, sanitation developments and stuff, humans used to live a lot shorter than we do now anyway. And so Getting a bad disease when you were 40 might not have actually made that much difference to how many kids you will have at all. So Medawar paid attention to the facts we've been talking about, and also to the fact that even if we didn't age, we would still die, because immortal doesn't mean invincible. Even immortals can be killed by falling rocks, lions, drowning, bears, etc. Um, and so... Even if we didn't age, there would be fewer 80-year-olds than there are 50-year-olds, fewer 150-year-olds than that, fewer 200-year-olds than that, and there would be some age past which people were never or barely ever living. And so his theory of aging now, which is now called the mutation accumulation hypothesis, he hadn't given it a name, is that the genes responsible for aging are genes which have bad effects that are delayed or which don't appear until roughly the ages at which back when we were evolving to be as we are now the age at which we would not be alive anyway so 
for example, Metawar expected that and believed that in the wild you don't often see old animals you because they most of them have died anyway, and that's what allowed the aging genes to accumulate. That's why it's called mutation accumulation. And if you see an old animal, it's usually because it's a pet. We've protected it from all the things that would have usually killed it, so only now do we get to see the genes responsible for aging express themselves. And so we see old humans, presumably by his theory, because uh, civilization has changed and sanitation has changed, so we're now living a lot longer than we used to and getting a chance to grow old. So that was Metawar's theory. Uh, George Williams's theory was similar. It also appeals to the declining force of natural selection with age. Um, but where Metawar thought that the genes responsible for aging would be silent and then eventually have a bad effect late in life, Williams decided to appeal to a thing called pleiotropy. Pleiotropy means that a gene has more than one effect. So for example, the same gene could cause me to have blue eyes and also be a jerk. Or it could cause me to have a green beard and be really nice to other people with green beards. Or it could... etc. Um, ple pleiotropy just means one gene has more than one effect. And so he brought up the possibility that a gene could have different effects early in life than late in life, and that one of these could be good while the other is bad. He gave an example, a made-up example, um, which was that imagine there was a gene that when you're young it helps calcium in your bones to make your bones stronger, but when you're old it contributes to calcium in your arteries, which makes them too stiff and gives you high blood pressure. Uh, if there was this kind of gene, so remember how the effect of a mutation happening early on will, natural selection will care more about it than the effects that happen late on. So, whereas Metawar thought it would be silent and then eventually there would be a bad effect, Williams thought it would have an early good effect and then have a bad effect. Uh, Williams liked this idea better because for, for, for Metawar's example, it would still be like a little bit opposed by natural selection and he just didn't want that, whereas these genes would actually be selected. So aging is still not an adaptation, but the genes which cause aging were selected for the other thing that they do earlier on. So those are the two main theories. Metawars is called the mutation accumulation hypothesis and Williams is called the antagonistic pleiotropy hypothesis. Um, I like to think of them as really part of the same theory. They both appeal to the idea of the declining force of natural selection. And as, as far as I know, for example, you could have some genes which are like the ones Metawar described, being silent and then bad, and other genes like Williams described which are good and then bad. Um, I don't know of a reason why you couldn't have some of each, and so I don't like to think of these theories as in competition, but as part of the same theory. Um, maybe that's just me. Finally, I'll leave you with a... There's a version of the antagonistic pleiotropy hypothesis, which was come up with separately, it's, and it's called the disposable solar theory, and it's been quite popular in the last few years. The idea here is that so in economics and biology, often you find trade-offs. A trade-off is just anything where you can't get more of this one good thing without giving up something, gi giving up some of this other good thing. And the idea is that there might be a trade-off between reproduction and um, longevity and self-repair and stuff, perhaps because there's some kind of resource that you need for both. And so if you give more of the resource to longevity, less of it goes to reproduction. If you give more of it to reproduction, less of it goes to longevity. And so... The reason I call that a version of antagonistic pleiotropy is just because the early good effect would be reproducing more and the bad late effect would be dying sooner. Um, so that's a popular way of thinking about it, but Williams' theory is broader than that and includes other possible kinds of pleiotropy. Um, yeah, so that's the modern mainstream evolutionary theory of aging, theories of aging. Uh, thank you.